nights. Wow. I'm <laughs> wanding you with episode 158. Oh, from my wand. Now wow. you're a drummer. If I was a queen, no, I would do annoying things like that to the court. Welcome to the meeting. <laughs> I'd like to invade Spain. <laughs> oh, termites. Back from Denver. It's one of my favorites. I'll stop. It's one of my favorite cities. Um, all the comics are so strange. Some of them aren't allowed to leave the state due to um, crazy behavior. What? Yeah, there's a... there's. <laughs> Well, I was looking backstage. Yeah. So Josh Blue, who I love, 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 love. Very, very funny. You should go see him. Josh has cerebral palsy. My friend Brad Williams is over at the comedy club. He sold out all his shows. He's a little person. Yep. Uh, John Novosad, a.k.a. Hippie Man. Mm -hmm. uh, totes. True, true, tried and true hippie from Boulder. Takes the bus everywhere. Just <laughs> loves weed. It's just a wonderful little circus of comics. And Stephanie McHugh, my friend Stephanie... Um, she came down and two shows and so many things to talk about. And Denver, I'm just telling you, I should write a little travel book called Hangouts where I like to hang out. And then the termites probably like in the same things because I'm not really into fancy. Sam's downtown, I know I've talked about, I had open faced turkey with mashed potatoes. It's like, <laughs> it's like Catholic grade school food or your grandma's food, but you can have breakfast. You can anytime. They're open until 10 o'clock at night. Full bar in the back. I recommend the back bar seating. Unless you want the diner feel, then you got to stay up front. Yeah. But I like that too. Um, and the shows were great um, at the Paramount. The Paramount's such a wonderful theater. And they try to get people in fast, but I apologize. Sometimes we start late. It's not because I'm not there. It's not because I'm not ready. It's because sometimes the wanding on security takes too long and people want to get a drink. Yeah. And I think they should be able to get a drink. Yeah. I would not want a show starting while I'm in line. Yeah. And John, open, John Nova said, he's very, very funny. And I don't want to do that to him where... People are all still filing in when he goes on a stage because he's funny. Right. And if I paid for the whole show, I want to see John. Yeah. So anybody that's complaining if we're starting 15 or 20 minutes late, that's why. It's for you guys. It's not for me. Yeah. Right. I have my drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I have all kinds of drinks backstage. I have whatever I want. I'm perfectly ready to go. I'm always there in at least an hour and a half beforehand. Um, so many things. Well, uh, I got to give a shout out to my friend Jessica too. And I met her mom and dad backstage cause she, she works at a hotel I like. And then she was like, Oh my God. Uh, she realized who I was. And then I made a video for her mom and then uh -huh. they came to the show and they came backstage, which That's was super, fun. yes, it was super fun to meet. Cause when people are like my mom, I forget how old I am. And I'm like, how old's your mom? <laughs> like, but they were totally fun, uh, hip parents. So yeah. And Jessica is probably younger than I think. I don't even know. I don't. But she she is a fan, too. And then her mom gave away the tickets. That Jessica was, was like, well, I was going to go, too. <laughs> <laughs> and her mom gave them away. I'm like, I can find two more. No problem. You called uh, me about your cheese board. The, the cheese board. She gave me a cheese board in my room. It was wonderful. There was a brie on there that I have yet to identify. It was delicious. It was a lifesaver <laughs> Friday night. Um, so what am I, I'm drinking out of this flyover brewing company glass and that's from Lenny, Katie, Kristen and Kelly. Um, wait, no, the lager glass is from Jill, Andrew, Sally and Matt. Sometimes this stuff gets confusing. Um, and they brought these little hair boo bears. Look at the, they're new, new kinds of hair, hair bow. I'm supposed nice. to say, I can't change it now. It's too late. It's not like somebody's parent, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I haven't tasted them yet, but look, they're like, I've never seen these. If you're not watching and you're listening, they're like a lifesaver, like a lifesaver roll of Haribo bears. It's called Mega Roulette. I'll taste those later because nice. they're not going to go. This beer is the Volkswagen Vienna style lager that came from Lenny, Katie, Kristen, and Kelly, who I, I imagine are on the roller derby team because they brought me a roller derby hat. <laughs> now here's the thing: I can't go roller derby because. The only time I've broken limbs as a child was roller skating. Like, I'm just clumsy. My nickname was Grace. I should not be allowed to do things <laughs> like that. And I broke, I don't even know which arms, uh, a lot. All the arms? Always of roller skating. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, this made me laugh my hand. Well, let's just go down. Oh, well, they brought bears. Dean and Tom brought these gummy things, the hair boo gummy things. Okay, I got it. And uh, an invitation to golf. Well, it's kind of, there's a lot of things going on. I'm shouting out everyone. Nicole and Jessica made this. They made me a hat, and they made Baby Cat a hat. Stop it. 
and wait till you see the video. I already put, <laughs> I already put it on her. And she oh she awesome. well, baby cat's the most compliant yeah. out of all the cats. And she sat on the couch. You'll see the video. She was stunned. I think she was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> but she didn't take it off. And then I thought maybe she likes it. <laughs> maybe in the winter when she's out prowling around. Um Give her a, a toque. Yeah. It's a baby cat hat. It's Nicole. Um, thanks for bringing joy. Blah, blah. Jessica. So you guys can see the video. That was already done this morning. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> and she ran outside. <laughs> I think she was like, I've had enough of uh, your playing around. Bye-bye. Yeah. Um, is this? Oh, that's somebody with their cat. Hold on. Uh, Wendy and Scott, shout out to the Bigfoot ornament. The Bye-bye. tree this year is going to have a lot of Bigfoot. Yolanda. Um... She works for United Airlines. She brought me some earplugs and stuff. But she also, she because she travels a lot, this made me laugh so hard. Where is it? She wrote me a note. This is a card from the equivalent of a dollar store uh-huh. somewhere in Asia, but it's the 100 yen store. <laughs> <laughs> she said, it's like the dollar store. Um, she brought That's Dutch fun. beers. And then these, which I'm going to taste, um, these are from, it's Komenex Indonesia Natural Something. Oh, potato chips. Yeah. I couldn't read that. I don't read in Indonesian. Oh, no, they're like smart pots. What are those things called? Smart chips. Um, the we, pops. We don't buy those. Pops. Pops? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. That's why you don't live in Indonesia. Yeah, I appreciate the effort. <laughs> but those are pretty, I don't know. Well, she said they're usually served with some sauce. Maybe I need the sauce. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, um, the some sort of peanut sauce. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. right. I think. Thank you, Yolanda. This is the card they're selling for a dollar. Look at it. It opens up. And it's just paper. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. To, but it has Asian writing on. She's like, I don't know what this says, but it's probably something very inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, Salt Lake Christmas ornaments I got uh-huh. from the real Great Salt Lake. Stop it. Yes, from Lisa and Carla. Um, I got some National Geographic stickers from Becky, an elder millennial termite. Ah. Elder statesman of the millennials. Okay. Uh, frozen what? margarita pops. I will admit I had one, um, but I didn't realize it was supposed to be frozen. <laughs> but it was still good, and then I gave them to Josh. Oh, nice. Well, Josh really wanted them, yeah. And I was like, I have a tough time getting them home, but I do. If I can't use the things or get them home, I do, they, go, they don't go to waste. They so. ship them. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Selena and Amber, Albuquerque termites. We're going to, um, I got to get to Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I know why they don't book it because it doesn't go with anything. Like somebody typed, and it was very funny on Instagram when I was doing Denver videos. You do realize you're only eight hours away from Albuquerque. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yep. yes, I know that because I've Googled cities that connect with Albuquerque for, mm-hmm. for, I don't like to fly the day of a show though. So, right. Because I think it's too risky and it makes me too nervous because I'm a responsible human being. Um, Albuquerque goes with nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, there's nothing. You have to fly there. Well, no, I have to fly there, but I'm saying, where would the next show be? Like, on one's on Friday, one's on Saturday, Thursday, whatever. Well, very hard to connect. So, what I want to do is if there's enough response for termites, I want to do two nights Enough's in Albuquerque. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I've never even been there. You've never been to Albuquerque? Maybe for a corporate gig, but it was in and out. But they're usually in Santa Fe because that's where it seems to me the richer people go. I don't know what that's all about. I'm oh, not in charge of that. No, I'm just saying corporate gigs are at these fancy ass places in Santa, Santa Fe. Fe. Yeah. Tim and Erica brought me an Ouija board that was like kind of homemade. I think. Oh. Well, it was very funky, very cool. It was very funky. And uh, these beer, these coasters, and then we're done with all that. Um, uh, Sally and Randy, these are Queen coasters. There's Dolly. There's Stevie. Ski and they have beer goggles on. Goggles. And no, they're beer goggles. Beer goggles? Well, maybe they're ski goggles because it's California. I prefer beer goggles. I mean, because it's Colorado. I prefer it's beer goggles. Whatever. Dolly, um, I'll be seeing the movie tomorrow night of Rockstar. Very excited about that. My little friend Dorf is going to go. Nice. I don't know how much he cares about all that, but he's going. That's nice. Yeah. Cool. It's weird because I won't go to movies with him. <laughs> <laughs> But he, I don't like the movies he likes. Like, oh, he likes, no, like James Bond, and he's a dude, like, you know, like all the action things. I just, Tom Cruise, I don't, I could care. 
The like last Tom Cruise movie I saw, he was 16 and or whatever in the, you know, that one a long time ago. Yeah, where he's dancing and singing yeah, and Scott all that. Um, um, okay, so let's just get moving on then here. Uh, wait, one other announcement. Cincinnati. Are you listening? Hello? Ohio. Ohio. Something went wrong with the seat map there. And uh, if you went to go buy tickets, it said it was sold out the whole time since mm-hmm. the on sale. It's not sold out. Mm-hmm. So if you thought that, yeah. well, there were like single seats left, I would have went, oh, shit, oh, well, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. So I'm not very happy with that error, but um, it's fixed. Yeah. So Cincinnati, expect you to get on that seat map. Let's do it. Buy some tickets. Um, I like Cher's hoodie. Cher's hoodie is the Paramount. They gave me that hoodie. Uh, what? Yeah, Mel gave it to me. Um, it's Queen News, Stevie, no news. Cher, no news. She got the free sweatshirt, though. Cher got a free sweatshirt. Her. And her Christmas album's mm-hmm. killing it. Um, Queen News. Um, Dolly, her imagination library, has now spread to Missouri, my home state. Yes. Yay. Department of Mi- Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Office um, partnered with Dolly. I'm, I'm shocked because the Missouri can be so conservative. They'd be like, well, what books are you bringing over here? I mean, we're going to have a book burning like crazy shit. Um, children under the age of five can be registered to re- receive free age-appropriate books delivered to their home. In order to get the books, a parent or guardian must register a child. Books will be mailed directly to the homes of the registered child every month, every registered children. In 1995, she launched her Imagination Library that has gifted over 2 million books to kids across the world. The That's state awesome. is responsible for getting the money to buy the books. Good. Yeah. Um, so that's starting up now. Cool. Missouri is the first state to launch... Uh, 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 14 other states have the Imagination Library. That's Why not all the states? Come on, you got the money. Right? They got to get on board. They do have to get on board. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tay-Tay updates. It's been a week. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm not going to go crazy with the Taylor running off the stage kiss, but it was adorable. Adorable. And, I mean, I, I know everybody's over-talked it, and people are going to get sick of it, but thankfully for him, football will be over in Jan- you know, whenever probably the, if they after Chiefs. They after they win the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and Tay-Tay shows up, <laughs> and then all of the two children, the Swifties, will go crazy. <laughs> Um, she melted TikTok. Saturday night. She melted TikTok. Oh, Did yeah. it break? Yeah. Probably. Uh-huh. Well, listen to this. Taylor, Taylor Swift tickets in Vancouver started today. They're already being relisted for up to $20,000. Oh, my God. I mean, who can afford that? Nobody. Who is doing that? Right. But this is even funnier. Those who missed out on the pre-sale <clears throat> code to Swift's Vancouver, Vancouver Eras Door Concert. Next year, watched in dismay Thursday as sales finally opened up and tickets were gobbled up, only for many to immediately reappear on resale sites like SeatGeek and StubHub for thousands of dollars. As of 3 p.m. Eastern, just an hour after the ticket they went live, um, they were listed for as much as $19,994 on Seat and $10,359 on StubHub. Uh, they go on sale December 6th, 7th, and 8th and are staggered to begin at 1, 4, and 8, I don't even know how that anybody handles this anymore. Um, this is Vancouver's situation mirrors Toronto's when the Swift Eras tickets went up for sale. Some immediately were relisted for $21,000. Wow. Um, meanwhile, I love this. Swifties are chanting and manifesting their way into tickets. What? Manifest. I love manifesting. I actually heard a lady on a plane go, nobody manifests like Charlotte. <laughs> What? Like, you have a friend that's a great manifester? She meant it, too. Um, one British Columbia mom told the Canadian press, she, press that she found her two teenage daughters huddled around candles, lucky crystals, and Taylor Swift friendship bracelets Tuesday night. They had a sign that says, we will get Taylor Swift tickets. And they were chanting, we will get a Taylor Swift pre-code, pre-sale code. We will get Taylor Swift tickets over and over and over. It was so cute. Are you doing your homework? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You're supposed to be reading your history stuff. (laughs) I know. I'm on it, Mom. I will get Taylor Swift tickets. I will get Taylor Swift tickets. 
The Tay Tay people need to find a second place person where they're just as happy, but I don't think they can. No. Nope. Mm. Nope. Go after Queen Stevie. Her tickets can go super low <laughs> or super high. This also made me laugh my ass off. Taylor Swift postponed Argentina show prompts airline to waive flight and change fees. Because she had to cancel because it was raining. Right. And it really was raining crazy hard. And and Travis happened to get there that day. So good luck for both of them. That's <laughs> wonderful, like, timing. But it, she really, she didn't cancel just because he was there. I don't think she would ever do that. Um, L-A-T-A-M Airlines, the largest carrier in South America, said it wouldn't charge customers date change or fees or differences in fare so they can stay in the city longer. That is the same thing they do for natural disasters. Yes. Taylor has now reached the level of a natural disaster. <laughs> An earthquake, a, a hurricane. Um, um, she was postponing a show due to heavy rain. The platform for the, she said due to rain, and the rain was crazy. There were pictures of it. I mean, there were kids. It, it was, it was, uh, yeah, up to their shins. Yeah. They tweeted out, attention Swifties, the airline said, we know your plane's changed. Your plans, your plane's changed. So starting tomorrow, we are updating our flexibility possible policy for those flights from Buenos Aires. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Airlines routinely add extra flights for events like hype, but this is way different. I, but a change fee waiver when a concert is can, canceled or postponed is very unusual, industry executives told CNBC. It's also a sign of how much her tour drives bookings. While it might be a new error for airline waivers, the Eras tour has impacted other... Um, like hotels and everything like that. But I just think, wow, you have the power of an earthquake. Like, I'm not obsessed with Tay-Tay, but I'm obsessed with, I am a, sort of obsessed with the phenomenon of it. It's amazing. Because I've never seen anything like it in our lifetime, and I'm not sure I will live long enough to see anything like it again. We were talking um, about um, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson didn't. Globally. Globally, yeah, he was global. Michael was global. Maybe even better, bigger in Asia and stuff. They seem to go a little crazier. Well, she hasn't um, gone there yet. Wait till she goes. She there. hasn't gone to Asia yet. I know the tour goes all the way till December of next year. I know. I look at those dates and I just I want to lay down. <laughs> I just want to go to my couch with baby cat and lay down and go la 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 la. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. It's crazy, but she's you know way younger and good for you. Um, all right, moving on. This is so, uh, there's so many updates. Update! Wow. Oh, the children. The anti-oil prester, uh, protesters. Um, they um, smashed a very valuable painting. Oh, I, we didn't talk about Tanya. Oh, Tanya, I forgot. Yeah, because yeah, I can't see. Dolly. There was something else with Dolly. The movie, co- I know, oh, there's always, the movie's, a- coming, out the movie's yeah. coming out this week. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have my ticket. Um, Tanya on wow. the CMAs yeah. just looked wonderful and came out at the end and sang Delta Dawn because she got put into the Hall of Fame. So they let her come out and sing Delta Dawn. She looked amazing. And she looked the best. She's looking a long, long time. So whatever you're doing, I'm sure cutting back on fruits and vegetables. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, not cutting. And that's what everybody who's taking those epics like, I just switched up my diet. Oh, stop. Just say it. Say it. I lost the equivalent of a nine-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I just started eating grapes. And then I was like, oh, my God, I'm so skinny. Uh but whatever the hell, I don't care. Good job. Um, and Jelly Roll, my friend, opened the show. And then Winona came out, and that got all very weird. Um, but Jelly Roll was extremely polite about whatever the hell. Um, I don't even know what That's went funny. on. Um, I did forget to read this one, too. Uh, Deanna sent a, a card backstage. And um, uh, I used to do gigs. Um these are fellow St. Louis's, but they've been in Denver forever. Um, and they want to invite me to golf, which is very nice. And they brought the salt and pepper pistachios. But they saw me 100 years ago. Every year I used to do this benefit for ALS in Chicago for this guy, Bob. And he died. And I learned more about ALS. And it's just, if you ever have any money to donate to any disease, that is just terrible. That's like one of the worst I've ever seen. Um, but the the Bob guy had a really good spirit. And, uh, you know, it's we- weird that people remember that. Yeah, that That's they were cool. there that long ago, and they're like, yeah, we remember you from the Chicago hoop Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, 
Um, the children have gotten into the, the London Gallery. Mm-hmm. <sighs> With, they're not hammers. What they have, I watched the video, it looks like a dumbbell. Okay. A, a, like a three-pound dumbbell. Mm-hmm. How in Christ's name did you get that through security? Listen, the children shouldn't be doing this. I think it's ridiculous. It makes it all it does is make people mad. Right. It makes me mad. Uh-huh. You're ruining art that's for everyone. For everyone, and it's hundreds and thousands of years old. We only have so many great things on earth, and you're just fucking them up because you have something to say. Yeah. Well, okay, we heard you, right. but now I don't like you, so I don't want to help you. Not on your it's n- no, it is not a way to make friends and acquaintances no. by destroying things. Oh, they hit the gas on their latest display of environmental activism. Breaking through a glass ceiling of sorts or a pricey glass-covered painting is more like it. The wild display of demonstrations, and this goes on for a while. You should see the video. Where's security? I don't. It's always about security. They're behind the ropes too. Mm-hmm. You know, they rope off in a super fancy gallery. They rope. The wild display of demonstration went down um, on Monday at London's National Gallery, which was housing Diego Velasquez painting here getting absolutely crushed by just a, by a couple of just stop oil advocates who have a history of destroying um, art to make their point. In this case, they were caught red-handed again. Well, yeah, then they gave a speech afterwards. They bashed the glass. I don't know if it messed up the painting. Um, only this time, instead of making a mess by splashing some crap on a painting, they decided to just hammer away. Watch. This girl and guy who are proudly rocking their JSO just stop oil shirts Go to work on, uh, go to town on the glass covered work of this guy, the famous guy, which is known as, um, there's a word for the painting, something, Roca B. Venus. It doesn't look like they were able to get the actual painting underneath, but they crushed the exterior. Um, London's Metro Police confirmed the two were uh, arrested on suspicion of criminal, criminal damage. The painting had already, you know, this is where it's, it's, whatever the penalty is, is not enough. No. Because the, the, these, these um, children the don't feel they don't feel enough fear. They're bad children. They're bad children. They're, they're not the good children. No. There's plenty of good children. Those people aren't it. They need to go meet with Bernie. Go meet with Bernie. They need to meet with Bernie. This is crazy. Well, it's terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they what they think they're accomplishing aside from being heard. There's other ways of being heard without wrecking stuff. Right. Go stand on a train track. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not a good. Either no, I should probably have a meeting with yeah, myself yeah, before yeah, I start I throwing out ideas. Yeah, that's not, that's not <laughs> Cause then you'd stop the train and then that would stop products from going. So that's not helpful either. I don't know. There's something funny. Do something funny mm-hmm. that gets the message out. And then people might want to join up with you. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just a thought update. <laughs> Remember the blue diamond I told you about? Uh-huh. It sold for forty three point eight million. Wow! It's the flawless, flawless, vivid blue diamond. It's the most flawless that's ever been put up for auction uh, in Geneva. It was known as Blue Royale. I told you, and it was set in a ring. Now this I get because you could wear it. I mean, you'd have to have bodyguards out the ass, I guess, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, somebody could roll me for that in two seconds. <laughs> At 17.6 carats, the diamond had an estimated value of 50 million prior to the sale. The stone made almost 44 million. It's a huge amount of money given on what's, go- what's going on in the world today. Not really. No. No, because there are super rich, and then there's the rest of us. And the super rich are spending 20 grand on Taylor tickets, no problem, and 44 million on a, a diamond. Right. Mm. It's a little weird. Yeah, they're not saying who bought it, though. They keep that shit a secret. In a separate sale, a, a Rolex ri- a wristwatch worn by Marlon Brando in the movie <laughs> Apocalypse Now sold for more than 5.5, uh, 4.5 Swiss million Swiss francs. The actor, the actor had his engraved his signature on the back to avoid having it swapped accidentally during a shooting. Hmm. It sold for $2 million before. Wow. Yeah, I could care less. Okay. I don't even like Rolexes. I don't like fancy watches. And then my sister goes, I bought a watch uh, from Shinola in Detroit because I love them. And she's like, nobody wears watches anymore, Kathleen. <laughs> I'm like, really? Everybody oh. gave up on time? <laughs> I know we're just not going to tell time anymore. I mean, I know it's on your phone. But sometimes you have to have your phone off. Don't right. you want to know what time it is? Right. No. 
I guess those are the free souls that I just can't. I'm not that loosey goosey about life. I like to know what goddamn time it is. Can't get on board with them. Nope. No. The good for them though. <laughs> Update. This is hilarious. Our shaman, our oh. Qunan shaman. No. Yes, yes. Um, he's disavowed that. He's disavowed the QAnon moment, uh, movement. He doesn't want to be known as the shaman. Stop it. His name is Jacob Angelina Chansley. We've talked about him. Remember, he wanted the vegan food in prison and all that. Um, well, if you want to be, stay vegan, don't go to prison. That's what I would, that's what I would recommend. Because you guess what you're getting? Bologna and mashed potatoes. Right. And you're going to like it. I would love it. Um, uh, he has filed paperwork because he wants to run for Congress. Stop it. <clears throat> Yep. No. The U.S. Constitution doesn't prohibit felons from holding federal office, but Arizona law pro- prohibits felons from voting until they have completed their sentence and have had their civil rights restored. Oh, my God. So does Texas. How do I know that? Because my friend Ron White was a felon, and he couldn't vote for a long time, and then they made it Ron White Day in some small town in Texas, and he's like, well, then you got to say I'm not a felon anymore if it's my day. Oh, right. Yes. And he got his rights back. Good thing on. Smart boy. <laughs> it was a long, long time ago. It was over pot. It was over pot. He didn't do anything very bad. Um, yeah, he's going to run for office. Wow. Yeah, he's very handsome without his horns and fur on. You can't say you disavow that. You're right. All, you're all in. Uh, he's very cute. Yeah. He's a good looking man. Did his wife leave him? Uh, I, I don't think he had a wife. He had a wife. Oh, I thought he lived with his mom in an apartment. In somewhere in Arizona. <laughs> you made that up. <laughs> no, I'm not. I did not make that up. 35 year old Chansley filed a candidate statement of interest Thursday indicating he wants to run as a libertarian in next year's election for Arizona's eighth con- congressional district seat. Are you sitting in Arizona? Like, who knows what seat they're in? I don't know what seat I'm sitting in. And I read and I watch the news. My old joke about Obama when he said, I'm going to need your help. I'm going to need you to email your congressmen and senators. I'm like, well, then I'm going to need you to email me who they are. I know the senators, but I don't know all the congressmen. He was sentenced to 41 prison months in prison in November of 2020. He served about 27 of those months before being transferred to a Phoenix halfway house. <coughs> he grew up in Phoenix. He's one of more than 700 people, traitors, who've been sentenced to the in relation to capital right. Um, he was one of the first ones out of the... He acknowledged using a bullhorn to rouse the mob. The thing is, it's not that you were one of the first ones. It's that you were so easily identifiable. This is because you did not have a lawyer as a father. And I'm sorry (laughs) for you, because if you had, you'd have known if you're going to do something this crazy, um, put a hood over yourself and lay low. Don't paint your face red, white, and blue, and then put on, he's got horns, and I think he had a spear. He had a spear. Yeah, an American flag. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go, Arizona. You want to get the QAnon shaman? He doesn't like that term, but it's not going to stop me from using it. The most, <laughs> the, most, the most Google thing is, does he have a real job? Does he have a real job? No, there's real something. Job. There's something. He's had mental problems. We, I swear to God, we read that. Yep. And he admitted to it. I mean, he's saying he had. It's right. not like I'm talking out of school here. No. Update! We work founder. You know, uh, I'm obsessed with Adam Newman. I'm obsessed with Elizabeth Holmes. I'm obsessed with con people. Yeah. Truly obsessed. He's still worth $1.7 billion. Because oh we just talked last week on a show about WeWork filing for bankruptcy. This little fucker got away. WeWork founder uh, and ex-CEO Adam Newman has managed to maintain $1.7 billion fortune as his once startup faced a slew of troubles that ended with bankruptcy filing this week. <laughs> When the co-working giant initiated Chapter 11 proceedings on Monday, it had $19 billion in liabilities and $15 billion in assets. Whoa. I'm not good at math, but there's a $4 billion difference. It's bad. His ability to sustain a 10-figure net worth can be attributed to the Juiced Up Stock Award worth $245 million he received when he was ousted as chief in 2019 about reports of his outlandish behavior. They had to pay him $245 million to leave. And you're the one causing the problems. Yeah. This is what happens when you give money to people that have not been vetted properly. Right. Everybody's falling. Everybody wants the next Steve Jobs. Right. Everybody wants the next thing that they're going to be in on 
This SoftBank, SoftBank, whatever it's called, they're the ones that really. He was also handed $2 million in cash as part of a sweetheart deal exit package, though he was left with a battered reputation following reports of booze-soaked affairs and wads of marijuana found on his private jet trips. It goes on and on. He's also, though, he's still um, SoftBank. Yeah, it's SoftBank. Um, those people gave him $432 million. That's crazy. With no paperwork. No. Like, you're just giving this jack straw money. Like, cool. well, how do you not know when you walk in and he's barefoot and there's music playing and right. there's beer taps everywhere? This is not a serious person. No. And I love beer. I don't like being barefoot. I always think something bad's going to happen. But <laughs> <laughs> my friend Andrew's always barefoot. I'm like, put on shoes. What's the matter with you? You're going to get ringworm. That's all I ever think of my mom going, put on shoes. You're going to get ringworm. I don't even know. But, oh yeah, I don't know. She thinks also, my mom also believes that heat seeders cause ringworm. <laughs> now, if somebody wants to Google that, go down that rabbit hole. Every time there's a heat seater on in the car, she freaks out. We're all going to get ringworm. Turn it off. I'm like, how long does it take, Mom? Because my ass is really cold and I'd like it to be hot. How long does it take to get the ringworm? Can I beat the clock? A minute. Um, he said, it's been challenging for me to watch from the sidelines since 2019 as WeWork has failed to take advantage of a product that is more relevant today than before ever. No, it's not, Adam. Nobody wants to go to your bullshit offices. The children go to Starbucks or a bar. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it before. There's rumblings that Newman and WeWork could have a type of reunion. Oh what kind God. of idiot would hire this Jack Straw back? Exactly. Um, since he's left WeWork, this is why it's an update, he's um, stayed under the radar building a new startup, Flow, a st uh, different narrative from WeWork's peak when it was valued at $47 billion and the seemingly carefree Newman pounded champagne at, at events as early as 9 a.m. Flow is a real estate tech venture that vows to solve inequities in the rental housing market, received a $350 million investment from venture capitalist or the firm Andreessen Horowitz at a $1 million valuation. It, it, does somebody, do these still, people are still giving him money. I don't even know. What does it matter with people? Don't you deserve this. I hope, I hope uh, this Horowitz <laughs> firm, yeah. hope he, I hope he goes and spends it all on weed. $350 million a year I dollars just to teach you a lesson. <laughs> Mm. He's buying um, <laughs> I do, weed or gummy suckers, something. Uh, Josh Blue gave me some of it. Josh Blue makes his own um, he has his own strain brands of pot. And it comes yeah. in packaging and stuff. He gave me tea. He goes, you know, I know you don't smoke pot a lot. I'm like, ever, Josh. I'm no. not against it. I just fall asleep. He gave me two weed suckers. We'll see how that goes. Nice. Yeah, maybe I can just uh monitor myself like that then instead of taking no, no one's in charge of you. Well, nobody's in charge of me, but Josh is a super is super weed guy. So his weed, I'm sure, is like not like, you right. know, right. junky. Right. Um so what they're doing is they're buying properties. He's uh, the platform has repeatedly built up a portfolio of three thousand units across major metro areas thanks to Newman's ability to acquire Majority stakes in apartment buildings worth as much as $1 million. He's long invested in real estate, including when he scooped up stylish digs in Manhattan's Gramercy Na Park neighborhood, combining two units on the top floor to create a 7,800-square-foot pad. He's wow. trying, been trying to sell it since 2020. He's had to take it off the market twice. I think he's asking too much. But So, onward they go. Nice. You know, he, he gets to run around. That Billy McFarlane guy, the fire Festival guy. Uh -huh. Out of, you know, he's already reselling stuff. Like, you know, selling tickets to some other bullshit fantasy mm -hmm. imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Elizabeth Holmes still in jail. Still in jail. Six more years. Mm -hmm. They'll get her out early, though. You know somebody called somebody. Because she got money from Clinton and George Schultz, all these important people. Yeah. Somebody's going to make a call. And she, I, my over-under, mm -hmm. my Vegas odds boards, let's yeah. check. Elizabeth is out in less than four years. It'll all be based on fake good behavior. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what I guess. Okay. Holy shit, they found it. Holy shit, they found it. A girl discovers a 100,000-year-old mammoth bones in Russian River while fishing with her dad. Oh, wow. How cool would that be? Very cool. Eight-year-old girl discovered the bones of a woolly mammoth 
and a prehistoric bison after a landslide along the banks of a river in western Russia. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Miriam Mirsatova noticed a series of strange objects that have been unearthed by recent, unearthed by recent landslide. By the way, what about the Iceland volcano? It's crazy. Do, 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 do. Anyway, so she found a woolly mammoth. <laughs> they were common um, in the frigid northern area regions of Europe and Asia beginning around 700,000 years ago, uh-huh. and later in northern America around 100,000 years ago. Oh. In the region where Miriam found the fossils, mammoths likely persisted until about 10,000 years ago when the end of the Ice Age caused these cold, adapted megafauna to lose their habitat and food sources. Human hunting may have accelerated during it may have accelerated their extinction. Wow. Yeah. Well that's pretty cool. It's very cool. Mm-hmm. Sad though, poor little woolly mammoth. I think they'll bring those things back to life, just like Jurassic Park. They'll get DNA out of some of this stuff, yeah, and yeah, recreate yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Holy shit, they found it. <laughs> this is a fun one too. For more than 60 years, researchers have been unable to physically see a critically endangered animal known as the one of the most world's most unusual mammals. But oh. now, one of Attenborough's, they, that's a guy, it was named after Sir David Attenborough. Okay. Um, his long-beaked echinita. It looks like um, a wolverine or maybe um, a porcupine oh. or an armadillo. <laughs> <laughs> kind of one of those types, mm-hmm. named for famed biologist and naturalist, has been found and caught on camera. Nice. Nobody's seen it in 60 years. Wow. Yep. Cool. They were considered critically endangered. Um, the animals haven't been recorded since 1961. The last time there was evidence of a species' existence was more than a decade ago when they found traces of digging activity in burrows, but they didn't see any. Mm-hmm. While a number of animals in the species is unknown, the red list states... The population likely to be decreasing with limited scope for recovery. But that's good news then if this little guy's crawling around. Yeah. Um, go look it up. Echinita. Echinita. Echin- no, wait. Echidna. Echidna. Yeah, I can't read right. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Um, moving on to news. news. So many good stories. This is like, I just don't. I don't have the house for it. (laughs) I just don't know why people buy these things. Mm -hmm. A rare Titanic first-class menu is up for auction, and it sheds light of life aboard. Abroad, sorry. No, aboard. Aboard. I got it right. A rare first-class menu from the Titanic is expected to fetch up to $86,000 when it goes on sale at an auction of memorabilia associated with the doomed ocean liner. Heavily water-stained with some of the letter partly erased, it is likely that this menu ended up in the North Atlantic for a time when the Titanic sank in the early hours of April 15, 1912. British auction house Henry Satata said in a description. But where's it been the whole time? Yeah. Okay, I get it. It floated off the boat. Right. The ultimately salvaged menu details the dinner the first dinner on board the Titanic that set sail from Queenstown, Belfast, and reveals the opulence that the first uh, ship's first-class passengers would have experienced. Cool. Here's your dinner options. This is the night of April 12th. Oysters, great. Sirloin beef with horseradish cream, nice. great. Yes. Desserts including apricot, a tart, and Victoria pudding. There seems to be no other surviving examples of the first-class menu for that specific night. The auction house found after consulting museums with Titanic collections and speaking to leading memorabilia collectors. Other items in the auction include um, a fleeting glimpse into the lives of the 2,223 passengers that grew Only of 706 survived. Um, that's it. We'll tell you how much it goes. That's crazy. But what are you going to do with it? You're going to frame it, and then when people come over, hey, did you go see in my family room? I have a menu from the Titanic. Right. Who cares? Okay. <laughs> I just don't understand what, I mean, it should be in a vague, it should be in a thing. Speaking of um, things I don't understand, the F1 race in Vegas this weekend. Tickets are dropping. Yep. 
like rocks out of a volcano. They're plummeting. The ticket prices are plummeting. And it makes me happy because all of my friends that live in Vegas and have to work in Vegas, this has been an enormous pain in their ass. I think these people overstepped. I don't think you should be charging $2,000 for tickets. The whole thing was crazy to me. And then I think maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's all these Americans that really like, I do not have one friend that knows a thing about it. I was talking with it about Lewis, with Lewis today about it. And he was like, is that Le Mans? I go, I don't know. When I was a child, (laughs) the go-kart track was called the Le Mans go-kart at Lake of the Ozarks. But I don't know. I don't know. I've seen it. Like you see it in the summer on TV in Um, France. You know, oh, okay, here's the F1. I know it's a big deal in Europe, uh-huh. but here, no. Yeah, I don't get that. Mm-mm. No. They've wrecked the strip. They wrecked the Mirage Volcano. They wrecked the Bellagio Fountains. They don't give a shit. They're spending $500 million, and it's going to be cold this weekend. They didn't plan on that. It's supposed to be like 80 degrees for those tires on the pavement. I read that somewhere. I don't oh, know if wow. that's true. It's just what I read. Um, Yeah, so... Maybe the inaugural Formula One race isn't going to be the boon that people thought it was. According to the reports, more than 10,000 tickets at their original price still remain unsold. May I also add, I have a friend, I will not mention names, who works at a a casino in Vegas, Uh and they're trying to give away, stuck with 120 high roller tickets. Nobody wants them. Oh, my God. Nobody cares. Well, I I would be curious if it was free. Or I don't know, 100 bucks to go, but I'm so short I won't be able to see from anywhere. It's just all I'm going to hear is noise and, yeah, yeah I'll be in the bar. Yeah. I'll watch it on TV. I'll be in the bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 10,000 uh, tickets at their original price remain unsold. The race weekend runs between November 16th and 18th, but some festivities around the city have already gone, begun. Some people, including ticket brokers, are selling race Ducats. I don't know what that is. I don't know, for far less than face value. Some reports say tickets uh, have fallen 35 to 50% since they first went on sale last year. Tickets for the practice run to try to get used to the course for the qualifying races have fallen as much as 60%. Yeah, just go watch that. And it doesn't start till 10 o'clock at night. A Ducat is a fancy word for ticket. A Ducat. Oh, yeah. well, maybe I'm reading a foreign site. Mm-hmm. I'm reading Travel Pulse. It's slang. It's slang? Well, look at us termites learning things. Yeah. Ducats. Do you have any Taylor Swift Ducats? Come again? Right. Huh? Which I forgot to even talk. The Gilded Age, speaking of the, when I did that accent. I know. I, I forgot that what we're watching segment because I need to go back to that. But the Gilded Age, it's boring. We need to step it up. I will allow you two episodes of filler shit, but snap, snap. We got to get some stuff going on in that show. Yeah. I like all the actors. But the writers, let's go. Anyway, whether it is so-called late uh, arriving crowd, no, because if you're going to Vegas for F1, you made your arrangements. Nobody's just bopping in. Right. Like nobody's at the last, well, maybe if you know all this is happening, maybe you're like, okay, well, let's go see how much it costs. Right. They're trying to rethink. Um, it causes le- it, If it causes Las Vegas officials to rethink its strategy about luring tourism with big-time sports, the city now has a football franchise, a hockey franchise. It's a process of getting baseball. So that, you know, they don't care. The racing isn't a thing. Um, no. There's 10,000 unseats sold in the grandstands. That's a huge amount for that's, an F1 event. Right, because we're not in yeah. Europe. Ticket prices will continue to come down, he wrote. There has been a correlation to uh, lodging prices. According to a survey by Casino.org, room rates for this week's, uh, some of the Las Vegas Strip hotels are down as much as 58%. It's also really difficult to get around yeah. because of all their bullshit. Uh-huh. I just don't. I just think it, $500 million, they thought they were going to make $1.3 billion. billion. That's what they thought. Wow. And the culinary workers are thinking about going on strike, too. That'll oh. be fun for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a cheeseburger? Yeah. No, they all quit. What? <laughs> what? Quack? Uh-huh. What? Wow. Speaking of Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I'm going to go back to watching, and then I'll go back to news. And that, yeah, my brain's just, you know, a little scattered today. But that's sure. what makes it show fun. Yes. After the sphere. Okay, the thing in Vegas. Good. I was so speaking of Vegas. Yeah. It's the big 
um, if you haven't seen it. It looks like a big ball, and then it changes um, colors and stuff, and it, it has this uh, emoji where it sleeps, and that's what I wanted to be my leader, and I want to do whatever it says. And then last week, it had a cat, a giant cat, following a laser beam. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, well, the sphere ain't going so well. No. No. It's lost $100 million. In this <laughs> 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 and the CFO quit. In the first quarter of operation. It's not going so well. No. He quit. <laughs> he quit. I'd quit too. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> This is your loss, a hundred million. Um, <laughs> even with that, the CEO, James Dolan, is optimistic that the new Las Vegas entertainment venue will be profitable as the venue presses ahead with more entertainers wanting to play there, more films in production, and more spheres to be built worldwide. We're building them everywhere. Spheres are going everywhere. That's so he funny. said he hinted the ticket price may go up, but the Las Vegas was the ideal location to open the first sphere because it's constantly changing tourist market. Here's the problem though. This, the sphere is not on the strip. It's behind the Venetian. You have yeah. to make an extra concerted effort. They should have bought the stratosphere. Yeah. What's that cost? A dollar? The Trump Tower. The, the, the Trump Tower. They, yeah. That's not really on the strip. That's a laid back. That's pushed back though. But, but the, the stratosphere, right? buy Circus Circus. What's that cost? $84? <laughs> it's horrible. Buy circus, put the sphere on the strip. It's not very nice. Well, just circus, saying. circus needs to get its shit together. <laughs> just saying. Put that in the notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's generated seven point eight million. It's lost ninety eight point four. That was even with the debut debut performance by U two. They said every performance has been sold out. And they've added 11 shows. Yeah, but the prices dropped because my brother was going to go there and take his kids. I'm like, go online. <laughs> if you just want to get in, there's tickets less than 200 bucks. Wow. And what does it matter where you sit? Because all you're doing is looking around. Exactly. You too looks like tiny little ants. Yeah. That's why I would never want to see somebody I really liked there. Because oh the rest of it's so distracting, cool, in a cool way. But I don't know. I think he gets sick. Um, yeah. Get busy. Yeah, well, I don't know. Right. They're putting them everywhere, but this is what I love. Yeah, this is what I love this CEO quick. Um, additionally, the company lost its chief financial officer as Gutam Ranji has resigned, according to the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission filing. Ram's exit was not the result of any disagreement with the company's independent auditors or any member of the management team or any matter of accounting principles or practices, financial statements. Well, what was it the result of? He quit. After a bout of yelling and screaming from CEO James Dolan. Well, you're the CFO. You're the money person. The CEO, Jimmy Dolan, comes in and yells at you. And you went, fuck, I quit. Bye. Okay. He'd only had the job for 11 months. Wow. Of course the guy's yelling and screaming. We lost $100 million. And you're in charge of the money. Right. <laughs> yeah. He quit. He's going to be replaced by Greg Bruner. You have fun with that, Greg. Mm -hmm. wow. Who do you think, what bands are going to go in there? Who, who, it's crazy. I mean, who do we, who, who, the, the Rolling Stones, when you're thinking about booking things, Google how many seats the Sphere has for me. Okay. Um, there are only so many performers that can sell shit tons of tickets. 18,000. 18,000. 18, That's an arena. So you have to go for the arena acts. All seats who, have high speed. All seats have high seat internet access. Just in case you want to know. Just like, well, yeah. bring your laptop and get some work done in case you two's boring you. In case Bono's combing his hair and looking at himself in the mirror too much. Oh, well, let me just get on, uh, let me get online and see if there's anything interesting for the podcast. <laughs> 18,000. I mean, those are arena acts. So think of who comes to your local arenas. Those artists. But can they do it night after night after night? No. It's crazy. No. It's too many seats. Everybody knows that. This is your opinion. These are facts. Okay. These are facts. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, you know, Guns N' Roses. They can sell it in an arena, but can they do it a bunch? No. Right. Oh, uh, you know, maybe who could? Maybe. Metallica. They sold out the arena in St. Louis. Uh -huh. Well, the Edward Jones Dome, even yeah. bigger. 
Um, I don't know. I think it's too many seeds. Um, all right, what do I want to read to you guys? Well, we'll speak, speaking of performers, this is a, this is a quick one. Yeah. Michael Jackson's leather jacket from his first Pepsi commercial mm-hmm. sold at an auction for $250,000. What? Well, at least that's something you could wear. I mean, you're a Titanic menu. What are you going to take it to a bar and show people? Hey, wow. do you want to see the Titanic menu? It's a black and white leather jacket sported for the ad in 1984. It was among 200 pieces of music memorabilia that sold in London at the prop store auction last week. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Would you spend 250 grand on it, though? No. No. This story makes me laugh, and once again, it goes to my home state of Missouri being, well, they're being bad, but I understand why they're being bad. So there was a Missouri school teacher. She's one of the children. And she's smoking hot. And they found that she was on OnlyFans doing porn. <laughs> but she's a grade school teacher. <laughs> but you know what? They don't pay these people any money. Exactly. You don't pay the teachers any money. And then you expect them to live on $47,000 a year. Mm-hmm. And guess what? She's smoking hot. She decided to do it. And now they fired her which is totally because the story blew up. Yep. Now she's making like a million on the porn side. An English teacher and varsity cheerleading coach of St. Clair High School. Oh, it's high school, but uh, still they don't pay him shit. No. Said she made pornography on website uh, on the website OnlyFans, marketing the, marketing the second teacher at the school to admit as much in the past month. So they're in the teacher's lounge going, just get on and do some porn. <laughs> Did we get a raise? Who cares? I have a half a million people. <laughs> Paying. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Gaither, 31, said in an interview with the St. Louis Post Dispatch that she was put on leave Friday by the Friday by the a school district Friday evening, and she expects to be fired after going public. She said she joined the Direct to Subscribers website in May to supplement her teaching sal- salary and help pay back more than $125,000 in student loans. Now, see if people would have allowed Papa Joe Biden to give the children their loans erased, maybe this lady wouldn't have had to turn to a life of porn. <laughs> teaching does not financially support a person melissa said megan said it really was hard to stretch those paychecks during the summer that's why i did it her total pay last year including a stipend for coaching cheerleading was forty seven thousand five hundred dollars. that's just below poverty yes. what are we doing our teachers should be paid a zillion dollars i know everybody says that but they really should right. i mean a yeah well, just uh, for me to deal with other people's kids as teenagers, oh, my God. Her former co-worker, Brianna Kopich, was put on lead and eventually resigned early this month after District was alerted to her OnlyFans account. Since then, her success on the site has skyrocketed. Her subscription rate has increased more than fivefold, and her story has been picked up by news outlets across the world. Same school. Wow. Two girls. Yeah, they're real cute. This lady, Melissa, said she, de- or Megan said she deactivated her own fans only account, which had about 1,500 subscribers after Copia's account was discovered by the district. She said she was making three to five grand a month on the site, but she never showed her face in effort to remain anonymous. It's also like every porn fantasy that the, the hot teacher is yeah, the porn lady. Totally. Well, these two are. <laughs> well, They're not showing their faces. She didn't think it would ruin her entire... It shouldn't. No. Who cares? Well, I don't know. I'm not a parent. (laughs) The district superintendent, Kyle Cruz, said that the district does not have a statement to issue at this time. And he did not respond to a statement. He had to delete his OnlyFans account. God. (laughs) Performers on OnlyFans charge anywhere from $3 to $75 a month for monthly subscription. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. Neither one of them knew the other one was on the site oh, come on. until <laughs> until Megan made an offhanded comment at teacher's night at Bush Stadium. Hey, <laughs> come see the Cardinals. <laughs> that led to more of a discussion between the two of them and then they realized it. Uh, Megan has a master's degree from Missouri Baptist University and Arizona State University, her fourth year of teaching American and British literature at St. Clair, which has about 750. Let her teach. Yes. She's smart. Mm-hmm. She's te- let her teach. 
We want to go through every teacher's hobbies and figure out what they're doing on weekends. I don't think we want to do that. Just let them let them be. She said she still loves teaching, and she initially deleted her OnlyFans account when Copage's account was the other girl's account was discovered because she didn't want to risk the same thing happening to her. Wow. She said her career at St. Clair is over regardless of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately have love in my heart for each one of my students. Of course. Yeah. Why are we done? Well, you can be both. Teachers are probably freaking out because two teachers from the same school in less than a month have been caught. So how many others? Wow. My friend Chris Voth, he's a teacher. Chris, are you on OnlyFans? <laughs> Chris? <laughs> he teaches high school English. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, here's a sad story, but it's kind of, no, it's not funny, but it's one of those life stories. A homeowner planned to throw away a painting hanging in their kitchen. It turned out to be a 13th century masterpiece worth $25 million. What? Wow. An old French lady. The painting by Florentine master Sinabu was found hanging in a kitchen in provincial France. The artwork has been declared a French national treasure. Wow. Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to read this version of it. It's over 700 years old. It was wow. above her stove. It was sold to the Louvre for $26 million. She died two days later. Oh. <laughs> a rare Renaissance painting from the 13th century that was found hanging above a French woman's stove will find its new home at the Louvre in Paris. Just two days after the panel was auctioned off for $26.8 million in a major bidding war, making the elderly woman a millionaire, she died, and her estate was split between her three heirs, as reported by Artnet News. This painting was completed in 1280. Wow. Yeah. The 743-year-old poplar wood panel has been one of the eight paintings, has been one of eight paintings for an altarpiece that depicted the Passion of Christ. The Louvre announced that it acquired it along with another national treasure, blah, blah, blah. I mean, can you imagine your whole life you've been looking at it? It's crazy. And then you wonder, did she have a nice life? You know? did she, Was she happy? Or which, did she need the money and didn't know that she was looking right at it? She probably had a lot of joy from the painting. You know, she was going to throw it out. She was tired of looking at it. <laughs> when, they don't say how old she was. Um, nobody bothers to report that stuff. Nope. Here's my nightmare. Oh God. This is why I don't go on cruises. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> Passengers left screaming and crying after cruise ship encounters 30 foot waves oh, I'm five no. foot tall yeah. that's six of me yeah. that's some wicked quack, cr cr crazy quack, math quack, I just did there quack, quack math mm -hmm. bad weather can easily ruin an otherwise lovely vacation but severe weather can quickly turn what was meant to be a relaxing trip you've been dreaming about into a complete nightmare this is what I, I do not understand mm -hmm. we have weather radar yeah. you had to have known mm -hmm. it wasn't one rogue wave where you can go, well, it's a rogue wave. Right. Couldn't be picked up. Couldn't be detected. This is a storm. Because they did it on the cruise ship I was on. I had the map. And they believe me, they turned that weather map off. Because I was watching it. Because it was getting a little weird. Spaghetti uh, yeah, it was spaghettification <laughs> of God knows what. And I remember telling Lewis, I said, do you look at the TV. Right. That's what we're sailing into. Why are we doing that? Mm -hmm. Why isn't the boat turning around? Right. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they do it. Somebody who knows about cruise ships, somebody told me they have to depart the po port or the cruise doesn't while. count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you got to be gone for a certain amount of time. But that's fine. Let's just go in circles where we're at if that's what this is all about. Right. Don't drive me into the storm. Right. Um, yeah. Passengers on a cruise ship in the UK faced a worse weather case scenario when their ship was battered around in the ocean by 30-foot waves. After seeing the footage, I can only imagine how terrifying this must have been to experience on board. The footage was shared um, to the Daily Mail's official TikTok account, and it showed the waves, uh, showing what the waves looked like from someone who was on the ship at the time. While many modern cruise ships are able to withstand pretty bad weather and intense waves, in this case, the situation became far too serious for the cruise to continue its journey. Well, you went far enough. Right. Four. 30 feet. It was traveling back from a trip to the Canary Islands on a two-week cruise out of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom when it ran into the waves while in the Bay of Biscay. 
After the captain found out the Spanish, that the Spanish ports he'd hoped to dock in would be closed because of bad weather, he decided to turn back early to avoid it, but it was already too late. Yeah. I'm firing him. Yeah. You're not my captain anymore. I'm not getting on a boat with you anymore. Nope. Uh-uh. You can't read the waves. You can't read the radar, right? <laughs> oh, my God. The waves were so powerful that the ship's propulsion safety system activated, jerking the ship to a stop in the ocean. One passenger said the ship stayed in place for about 15 hours. At that point, the passengers were only nine days into their cruise, but it became, uh, but it came to an end after the uh, incident. Uh, nine days in, we still got to keep going. Uh, you can't get off. Oh, it's an awful end to the passengers' vacation. I wouldn't blame them if they never wanted to go on a cruise ship again. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's uh, this is why I won't go. I mean, if you ever see me on one again, I've been kidnapped. Call my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um, wow. Pizza Hut. <laughs> How gross is this? Yeah. Ah, I like Pizza Hut. I thought you were making this up. I'm not making it up. Okay. They're, sna- they're selling snake pizza in yeah. Hong Kong. Oh, there's a picture of it. And they have. it looks like calamari. It's like little rings. Oh. But it's snake. Now, full disclosure, I've eaten rattlesnake. Well, that's like that. They do it in Texas. That's where I did it, in Texas, because I had to go for ESPN2 to cover a, t- a rattlesnake roundup. And they fried it. I didn't want to eat it, but I had to for the TV part. Mm-hmm. I had to. It was fine. Yeah. It tasted like rubbery chicken. If you really More rubber than rubber chicken. Yeah. More rubbery than chicken. No, yeah. well, that's how they fried it. I mean, why not just make it a funnel cake and put powdered sugar on it? It was, re- it's re- I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe people know how to cook it better, but American company Pizza Hut has teamed up with century old Hong Kong, a century old Hong Kong restaurant, to put a modern spin on a traditional di- dish, or more simply, snake on a pizza. The new offering combines shredded snake meat, black mushrooms, and Chinese dried ham. All indispensable, indispens- indispensable ingredients of an authentic snake snake stew and part of Hong Kong's franchise marketing plot to generate a buzz online. Hmm. Well, you might ger- generate a buzz, but it doesn't mean I'm coming. Because it's tough to make a buzz. I'm talking about it. Yeah. But I don't want it. Because there's still pizza sauce? Yeah. It looks like there's pizza sauce according to what I'm looking at. But it also looks like they have Oreo cookies on the outside. <laughs> it's really strange. <laughs> I don't know what those are, but they look like Oreos. Um, according to um, a saying in the local Cantonese dialect, the best time to eat snake is when the autumn wind begins to blow, when they fattened up to prepare for hibern- hibernation. Many believe that snake meat has medicinal properties, improving skin conditions and warming up the body. A rich culinary culture based on snakes is common across other parts of Southeast Asia, too such as Vietnam and Thailand, where the snakes are usually farmed for consumption. Now, I have watched Survivor back in the day when Survivor was a new show, Mm -hmm. and when people get desperate, they get a snake, and they get really happy, and they eat the snake because it's meat. Mm -hmm. But I haven't been that desperate in my own house. (laughs) No. Um, The 9-inch pizza, pizza which comes with abalone sauce instead of conventional tomato base. See, there you go. No, it's not. It's on sale until November 22nd. CNN has sampled the pizza and found the texture of the snake similar to dry chicken. Uh, Rachel Wong, a native of Hong Kong, is very excited about the new menu item. (laughs) The texture is a bit like chicken and tastes like fish and other kinds of seafood. So I love having it as a high-protein meal during the winter. Mm -hmm. Gross. Uh, that's all. That's all on that one. Yeah. Do you love TJ Maxx and do you love Marshalls? I do. You love. You don't love Marshalls? No. I love them both. My mom loves them, but I can't go in there with her. It takes her too long. Yeah. Yeah. She'll spend an hour going through the underwear bin. I'm like TikTok, mom. We gotta get out of here. I don't want to watch you buy underwear. Do that on your own accord when you take a little trip up here by yourself. I don't want to. Do you think these would work? I don't know, Mom. You're 80 years old. You should know what underwear you wear by now. 
Bad news for frugal bargain hunters. TJ Maxx and Marshall stores are closing. And the Marshalls are closing some stores. Uh-oh. Yep. Uh, and then they talk about, uh, it, unfortunately, a love of these stores isn't enough to save them. They announced they're closing many locations. Is your city on the list? I'm hoping to get one. Right. Yeah. I'll switch out Hobby Lobby for a TJ Maxx. Any day. How about that? Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to be closing in New York and Chicago. The parent company is sh- uh, shuttering stores in Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Chicago while they reassess real estate strategy. Looks like no one is safe from insanely high real estate costs, not even our favorite frugal focused stores. Why don't they go back in the defunct malls that are doing pickleball? Why not? Pickleball's more popular. Make the whole, I mean, here's the thing with TJ Maxx and Marshalls. You can't just buy it online because you don't know what's there. So it's not like saying Nordstrom, I can just go online or Macy's go online. Um, And I don't know what's going on at Macy's, but the one by my house, I had to cut through it to get to the Apple store. And I mean, it really looked looted. Like, it looked like there were a loot. Was there an incident? And I'm like, Googling incident at the mall. Yeah, like, just, and there's people standing behind a counter. Not many. Mm-hmm. Not many workers. But they do not look inspired to pick anything up. No. no, just leave that shit right there. But I feel like that about home goods sometimes, too. Yeah. Home goods, especially around Christmas time. Yeah, under the clothes. <laughs> there's, well, the home goods part where you're just like, wow. Mm-hmm. Somebody picked up every single pillow and went, nope. Fuck it. And just threw it on the ground. And like nobody, like you, trash. just garbage. Yeah. And they have good stuff at home goods, yeah. I think. Um, they're trying to consolidate. Um, we don't know if these employees are going to be shifted to other locations. Da, 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 da. Chicago, it's the downtown one. Um, I did not know that their parent company, they own Winners. I don't know what Winners. Canada. Canada? It's a Canadian deal? It's the same thing. TK Max. That's the UK? Mm-hmm. Home Sense? No idea. And Home Goods. They own all that. Hmm. Um, yeah, so that's sad because I don't think, I don't know. I It's just fun, especially on the road if I'm bored. That doesn't happen anymore because I don't work in clubs anymore. But when I was in a club for a week, if you're bored, mm-hmm. there's nothing like a little trip down to TJ Maxx to brighten your day. <laughs> new fans. Yeah. Hey, I got new socks and underwear. Um <laughs> I don't know why I find this to be so funny. Four men charged in the theft of satirical golden toilet titled America at Winston Churchill's birthplace. It's an 18 karat gold toilet titled America. Four men have been charged over the theft. And it's from the sprawling English mansion where British wartime leader Winston Churchill was born. It was the Ita- it was the work of Italian conceptual artist Morzio Catalan. Four men were charged with the theft from Bleenham uh, Palace, the sprawling English country mansion of Winston Churchill, where he was born. The toilet valued at four point eight million pounds, which is five point nine five million dollars, was an artwork titled "America" and was intended as pointed at political satire about the excessive wealth. By Italian conceptual artist Marzullo Catalan. It was part of an art installation at the palace a few days before it vanished overnight in September of 2019. The Crown Prosecution Services said Monday it has authorized criminal charges for four men, ages 35 to 39, over the theft. They are accused of the burglary and conspired to, they're accused of burglary and conspiracy to transfer criminal property. Seven people have been arrested over the heist, oh but no charges have been brought till Monday, four years later after, after the toilet was stolen, and they still never have found the toilet. Wow. Well, how do we know they stole it right. if they don't have it? It was fully functioning prior to the theft. Down. You could sit and go on the golden toilet. It was fully functioning. I sat on an all-China toilet in Saddam Hussein's palace <laughs> when I went to Iraq because we got to stay in his palace, but there was nothing pal- palatial, uh, uh, palatial about it. It was all like barracks for army people, the higher ups, like it. And I was with the uh, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and all his people. Every, it was an empty palace minus bunk beds, right. really, and a table to eat at, except Saddam's China toilet. So weird. It was very weird, and I would not recommend a China toilet. It's very cold. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. If you got your eye on one at um, Lowe's, don't buy it because your ass is going to be freezing. <laughs> Will we ever see the toilet again? Personally, I wonder if it's in the it's in the shape of a toilet. To be perfectly honest, 
If you have a large amount of gold, I think it seems likely someone has already managed to dispose of it one way or another. The four suspects will appear at the Oxford Magistrates Court on November 28th. I don't know how they've decided these people did it. The article didn't explain it. I'll do a deep dive as soon as their trial starts. Thank you. Thank you. I bet they melted it down. It's probably already melted down. But how do we know that they stole it? Um, uh, this makes me laugh. So one time I was checking in. I was doing a, bene- uh, a weekend golf benefit for cystic fibrosis with, with Lewis. And it was somewhere in Arizona. And I got in late. And they have little cabanas. You stay. You have to go outside to get to your little tiny house. And uh, the guy goes, uh, I was going, and I'm not desert savvy. Right. I don't know anything about it. It's not my thing. I get a headache the minute I get there. It's not my thing. And sunburn. I don't need more skin cancers. I'm good. I'm full up on all that. <laughs> anyway, the foot dyke guy goes, what, are you going to your room alone? I'm like, I looked around. I'm like. Well, I was going to go to the bar first. You never know. What, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm going to my room alone. He goes, be careful, be careful of the javelinas. And I said, why would I be afraid of my own flip-flops? Right. <laughs> I thought he was. Javier. Javier. <laughs> and he was like, the, the javelinas. I go, what's a javelina? Right. Every time I go to the desert, I find they warn me about something else fucked up that's out there. <laughs> they're tiny. Well, they're, well, they're pig-like creatures. And they run in gangs, and they'll attack the shit out of your ankles. I mean, and they have, like, little tusks or, I don't know, fangs or whatever you want to call them. Um, <laughs> pig-like javelina, also known as, uh, also known as musk hogs, have been, they've been destroying a golf course wow. in Arizona. They've been ravaging, ravaging the turf of Seven Canyons Golf Club in search of food. But, and that, this was also when I was told when I was going to go out golf, don't go by certain plants because the plants attack you. They're like, they have things that they shoot out into your leg. Mm-hmm. Like only in the desert will you go, hey, if you walk by that plant, FYI, you could hit, it, it might shoot you with a dart. Right. The plant. Right. Um, the destruction is revealed when the golf course, when the sun comes up in the morning. Sprawling mounds of ravaged turf, turf blot the 7,000-yard course like open wounds, soil and grass sown in all directions across otherwise pristine fairways. The perpetrators... Havelina, a pig-like <laughs> creature with raking canine teeth whose capacity for chaos in the town of Sedona has seen them become a viral sensation. Wow. <laughs> I love it. They're kind of cute. Like, you kind of would want one. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, like, but, like I mean, ones. I know. When you, come upon, when you come upon them and see them, it's like the Tasmanian devil, Seven Canyons general manager said. There's turf flying all over the place. There's grunting. There's fighting. For rather small creatures, they can do a lot of damage. They can, uh, they can till the turf with their teeth. It's really disturbing when you see it. And a green, a golf course green, for the record, costs a million dollars, yeah, usually. About a million bucks. So if it's all ruined, pig-like, but not pigs, javelina, also known as muskhogs, are members of the peccary family, a mammal species that had originated in South America before venturing north into Arizona and other southwestern states of the United States. With a white collar ring, there's a picture of what he's kind of cute. I know I shouldn't say that probably because people are be like, they're not cute. Uh, they're destructive. With a white collar uh, ringing gray black fur, javelina typically grow to three to four feet long and 19 inches tall. That's They're only this tall. Oh my That's God. tiny. Yeah. They're like mini pigs. That's what I thought. They Thankfully, when I went to my room at night, because they're super active at night, that's why the guy was warning me. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I don't like the desert to begin with. And now you're telling me there's tiny attack pigs that travel in gangs that are going to eat my ankles. Um, they will eat garbage, too. They'll eat just about anything. Um, yeah. They look at the golf courses. It presents an irresistible all you can eat drink and buffet for a species looking to fatten up for the winter. Because there's earthworms wriggling out of the grass. So they want the earthworms. Wow, there's 25 to 35 in a herd of them. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. They can churn up expanses of turf in search of a midnight snack. You got to go Google the picture. If you're not no. a, from the southwestern part of the United States, uh, you got to go see. The club is going to spend between 150 grand and $300,000 in labor costs by the time the javelinas uh, back away. 
with a further 50 to 75 grand spent on additional seed, turf growth, and blankets. There's got to be a way to keep them out. Yeah. There has been a consolation, viral fame. Um, yeah, he's posted a bunch of videos. We'll put it in the show notes where you can go look at them. Oh, my God. One of the videos he posted had 1.4 million views. Three weeks later, it's at 30, 32 million views. Whoa. It's a, it's a mere 30-second clip of the javelina's dose of destruction. Did you have a research assistant help you with this story? No. Oh, well, well, I did. I didn't find this on my own. That was my research assistant, um, Dax, who, when he's not researching things for me for the podcast, he's the drummer in Cheap Trick, Whoa. which is a job that actually matters versus being my research assistant, but I like that there's important people out there sending me articles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, before we go, uh, what are we watching the Gilded Age, blah, blah. Okay. But I watched Twin Flame or Twin Flames, oh, yeah. Flames. I don't remember what. It, I, it's a three-parter on Netflix. I think it was on Netflix. I gotta watch it. It's an online dating thing. It's supposed to teach you how to find the love of your life. The guy and the girl are so clearly full of shit. I yeah. don't understand how people would give them a lot of money. Like some of the, the classes in, 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 in general, if you do them all, it's like eight grand. Mm -hmm. It's not free. He's some... F moron up in Michigan, <laughs> go read his resume. He, he's really full. He's just a con man. Yes. And then these people, some of them were having sex changes because he said so. Yes. It go, But here's the weird thing. In journalism, I was taught a good story has to have a beginning, middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. This has no end. No. He didn't get busted. Nope. She's not been busted. The wife or girlfriend who's in on it, I don't know what her. Twin flame, hello. Twin, <laughs> God, you're twin flame. <laughs> Jesus Christ. People, it's just not that hard. Find somebody in your neighborhood and marry them. I mean, I, that's why when people go, oh, you know, you're the love of my life. There's a billion Chinese people you haven't met. How do you know that for sure? You don't. You're just good enough. You're fine. You're here. That's important. You don't live in Beijing. That would be hard. I mean, um, you know, and all these people aren't stupid. They're not the people that got suckered in. They were just hopeful and all that. But here's why I want it to happen. He, at one point, he turns from an online uh, thing mm -hmm. to a church. Yep. But he says it. Let's be a church because you don't get taxed. Yep. How, can we get the IRS? That's how we bust these people. Uh -huh. Let's get the IRS. Yes. Show them this movie, mm -hmm. this three-parter on Netflix. I didn't think it was worthy of Netflix because there's no... Kind of you're just showing me a cult, what I would call a cult. Mm -hmm. You want to call it online classes that... The thing's completely out. You have to stop contact with your family. That's why it's kind of a cult. You're not allowed to speak to anyone in your past, blah, 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 blah. All the same shit. And a lot of young people are falling. Well, not just young. I mean, there's old people in there too. I don't know. I was like mad that I watched it. I'm like, okay, this was stupid. It could have been an hour yeah. instead of three parts. Yep, um, it's way too long. And there's no ending. No. He's still doing it in Michigan. People are still signing up. Wow. I, it's, what? Yeah. Well, I love where people know about it now. And, and my little sleeper movie I told you about, Nyad, yep. picking up a lot of steam. Everybody loves it. Annette Benning is so good nice. at playing that lady. And Annette Benning really, I don't know if I'd be willing to do that when I'm 60, like get in a swimming suit because she, you know, she looks, she looks great, great yeah. but she looks 60. Um, she's a very good actor. I wouldn't be asked to do anything like that, thank God. Speaking of <laughs> actors, speaking of actors, before we do our quotes, this is a little plug from my good friend, Louis Black. Okay. Did you guys see the movie Inside Out, the I Pixar did. animation movie? I watched it on Okay, here's the thing. I don't like to go, I've, I've only been invited to maybe, I don't know, probably like five movie premieres I have the um doubt um in my life and I don't want to go. Uh -huh. I don't like red carpets. I don't like the whole thing. Right. I don't like anything to do with it. But Lewis was like, please go with me to this premiere. I don't want to go. I don't have anybody to go with um, Pixar a Pixar premiere cool. of the first Inside Out. Uh -huh. Because a lot of people may not know that my little friend Lewis Black is the voice of anger. anger. The red little character in the movie if you've seen it. So we went to the premiere and I'm like, okay, I'll go. Well, it's so funny because they had a purple carpet oh, fun. instead of red. And it was mostly for kids. Mm -hmm. 
Except at the very end of the purple carpet, I saw a bar. And it was like 100 degrees out, Mm -hmm. and there was this little child. He was this fat little uh, Hispanic kid, Uh and he saw Lewis coming. Uh I've never seen a child, like, lose it like that. Mm -hmm. Like, his head was, he's like, anger, (laughs) anger. And he knew Lou's name. He's like, Mr. Black, (laughs) Mr. Black. Even Lou was like, holy shit, what am I supposed to do with that? I go, you're supposed to go over there, Lou. That's your, picture, big, that's your biggest fan ever, Lewis. Get on over there. So I went with him for a while on the purple carpet because mm-hmm. it's good if you have somebody to help you because then if it gets too crazy, you can go, hey, you got to come with me. And he had a publicist or yeah. whatever, but it was so hot. Yeah. It was like 102 degrees in L.A., and I'm like, hey, dude, you're on your own. I'm going to the bar. <laughs> and there's no line at the bar because it's mostly parents with their kids. Yeah. Right. It was great. So it was an outdoor bar all set up. Then we went in and watched the movie, and then we went to some party afterwards. I don't know, but it was because it was a. Can this is it? yeah, I can catch it. Um, I bought this. No, on, he sent that to you. Did he send it to me? Yeah. Oh, okay. It it's for ages three and up. It was perfect. It's <laughs> Lou's little anger person. Mm-hmm. It's from the first one. I think I have another one too because I was gonna sell one on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, will you sign this? Uh, for yeah, my office. yeah, Lewis. <laughs> let's see. Try me. Let's see if it still works. It's it's been here so long. I don't know. I think it needs a battery. Let me see. Yeah, he doesn't talk, but you can have Lewis's voice forever. Anyway, Inside Out Two. He couldn't say it because of the strike. It's premiering this summer. Nice. June. Um, the first one was in 2015. God, it was that long ago. Um. And Sadness, Phyllis Smith, the lady who does Sadness, she's from St. Louis. Like so I'm very proud of Mindy mm-hmm. Kaling does Disgust. Fear is Bill Hader and Anger, Lewis Black. That's going to be fun. Yeah, he's excited. Um, I don't know if he's going this time to the premiere of the second one. Um, the sequel was announced um, in February in uh, 2022 at Disney's Expo. It's going to be June. It's going to be in theaters on June 14th, 2024, almost oh. nine years after the first film. He's yeah, so he records today. stuff over time. Like, he'll go in and record stuff, and then there'll be a big gap, and then he'll do it again. And I, Animation takes forever. So if you like animation and you go see one, just know that a lot of people worked really, really hard. I would not have the patience for any of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so my recommendations is go watch Nyad. Okay. I would skip Twin Flame or Flames. Lou made it through 10 minutes, but he passed it on to me. He goes, you'll probably like this. I can't because it's a con man cult thing. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't like it if, you know, you just tell me, oh, they ch- switch to a church and there's, a, where's all the fucking money? Right. Let's get the IRS going here mm-hmm. and bust these people because you know he's just spending it. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not reporting half of it, I bet. That's my guesses. I'm not saying I know that to be true. I'm saying I'm figuring it's true. I gotcha. That's right. Thanks. Um, before we get out of here, termites, the new holiday long sleeve shirt, um, mm-hmm. they're, they're, like they're, white. they're gray. They're, gray. Mm-hmm. they're not white. They're light gray. Mm-hmm. But it's a speckled gray, if you will. Mm-hmm. Athletic gray. Athletic gray. Mm-hmm. Whatever. We sold a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're out of larges, but I don't know. Maybe there's two, larges. there's two larges, and then there's smalls, mediums, and XLs left. No, and 2X and 3X. Oh, and 2X and 3X. I forget about those. I don't have any to show you because they're all went straight to the thing. Mm-hmm. I'll, I am going to get one, though. I'll show it to you. They're real fun. They're fun. Good job. Yeah. And um, the DVDs and CDs will be on Facebook. Right. CDs and DVDs. They're all going to be on the website. Mm-hmm. They're getting out of this house. There's I can't. Yeah. There's a lot. And then they keep coming as my siblings move. <laughs> they're like, hey, do, why was I holding this? I'm like, because I didn't have a house. That's right. why you were holding those. Right. Well, I'm sending them back. Okay. We're going get, to get two kings, two new kings. I yeah. will be telling you who those are next week. And yeah. we're not retiring anybody, but some people are going to take a back seat when they don't have anything going on. Mm-hmm. They're not retired. Bob was concerned. My friend Bob was concerned that I was retiring. Too. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> no, she's not retired. No. Um, and then here's where I'll be going. This week, two shows at the Villages. <laughs> and I may or may not have a secret hookup at Gatorland. Super fun. I'm so excited. Uh, then, the last shows of this year, Eugene, Portland, Seattle. Fun. Yeah, I like going out west, and I like it in the winter because mm-hmm. it's all very uh, spooky, spooky. Mm-hmm. Then January, 
12 and 13, Wichita, Tulsa, then Santa Rosa, Wheatland. Santa Rosa, I think, is sold out, and Wheatland probably. Those are the makeup dates um, from when I had to go home for my dad. Um, then San Luis Obispo, Monterey, Birmingham, Alabama. Fun. Delicious. Atlanta. Love it. Scottsdale. Fun. Talking Stick Casino. So fun. That place is so great. Mm-hmm. Just great. They need one like that in Nashville. Uh, Chattanooga. Always fun. Chattanooga's on the rise. Nashville's already risen. Then when all my old friends complain about the traffic in Nashville, I'm like, move to Chattanooga. (laughs) That's what Nashville used to be. It's it's starting out strong. It's adorable. Lots of children are there. The children are making it fun. Mm -hmm. You're in the mountains. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's It's prettier than Nashville. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nashville's exploding. Yeah. Huntsville, on the upswing. Great downtown. Uh Two shows in Detroit. Royal Oak, uh, March 1st and 2nd. Dayton, Ohio. Uh, Indian Dayton's where my uh, friend is. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's Indy. On, is it Indy? Butler, yeah. Butler? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where my little friend is, the oh. president of the university. Yeah. I'm going to write him a letter and see if I can attend when I retire. I'm going to go back to college. <laughs> I'm going to go be a student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I see these kids, like, you know, and they just seem to be having so much fun, and they just walk around, and their parents are paying for it. My parents didn't pay for college, yes. so I don't know what it's like to live that life. James Denko. James Denko? Yeah, he's the president. I couldn't believe that a president wanted to meet me, a president of a university. I'm like, you wouldn't even have let me in here if I applied. <laughs> There's no way he would have, and he should not have. No. I'm not blaming him for that. Anyway, moving on. San Antonio. I love San Antonio. Austin. So fun. I'll go get to see my friend Ron if he's not back out on the road in his unretirement. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. <coughs> Cincinnati. I know where my favorite bar is there. Terrytown, Wilmington, Thousand Oaks. Fun. And there's not a Thousand Oaks there, I've counted. Nope. Nope, there's about 408. <laughs> mattress stores. <laughs> a lot of mattress stores. I don't know what's going on out there, but there's a lot of sleepy, sexy people out in Thousand Oaks. <laughs> it's all you guys are doing is laying around taking naps or getting at it. Mm-hmm. Um, are you going to make your dressing? People want to know if you're doing a video. If I'm going to make the dressing, it's not going to be for Thanksgiving because, um, no, I'm driving... And no, I don't have time because I have to go to the villages and then I have to turn around and go to wherever I'm going to. Oh, well, that's Thanksgiving. I don't have time. I won't be home enough. Thanksgiving is next week. I know I don't have it all sorted out in my head. I said on the family thread, I'm bringing sale bin liquor. (laughs) (laughs) You know how you go in the liquor store, there's always that one thing in the top and it's just random mini bottles. That's what I'm going to bring. I'm going to bring a bucket of random mini bottles of like whiskey you've never heard of. That's what I'm bringing. Nice. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. No, I'm going to make it definitely though at some point and I have to make cookies for my dad. I promised I would. And I haven't done that yet either because I haven't been home. Where have you been? I've been on the road. Yeah. Yes. Ridiculous amounts of time on the road. All fun. Baby, All good. Baby cat's, baby cat's disgusted with me and she should be. Mm-hmm. But this time I'm home for at least three days, four days. And then um, my friend who feeds her and stuff, um, she likes she likes Aubrey a lot. Yeah, yeah, she's a good second place. Good. Yeah. So. Well, have fun at Rockstar. I will report back about the Dolly movie. Mm-hmm. The rock star Stevie's in it. Welcome, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a clip of Stevie's in it. Welcome. Um, that's what I like to say to the cats when they all walk in the house. Welcome. <laughs> Let's get this party started. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I probably need more human friends. I'm not home long, long enough. Only uh, My friends are all over 75 years old, and they're at the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> and they start drinking at 4. Yeah. If I go up to the bar at 4, all my friends are there. Okay. They're all gone by 6. That's right. So if I want, yeah, I'm fine with that schedule. Oh, I forgot to read the quotes, and we're out of here. Bed by 7. Perfect. Yep. Dolly Parton. I'm comfortable in my own skin, no matter how far it's stretched. <laughs> Reflecting on her own distinctive look in the New York Times. Add a quote from Tay Tay. Uh, I'm just opening to random pages. Uh, I'm intimidated by the fear of being average. Whoa. Well, that's a, well, that. well you, yeah. you're you now a natural disaster. <laughs> you've gone to the level of an earthquake or a hurricane or a tsunami. Yeah. Congratulations, you've done it. You 
Now, your job is to maintain that. You are an economist. But you can never be average again after what you've accomplished. So you're set to go. Now you should quit. Go do something else. Have fun. Get a cat.